Well, welcome everyone. And uh, this year, of course, marks the inauguration of the first female vice president in history. Women, however, are still lagging when it comes to leadership roles in business. According to a 2020 CNN poll, the number of winning women running Fortune 500 companies is 37, and that's only 7.4% of the total. Women-owned firms are also in the minority, and women continue to face unequal pay, sexism, and gender barriers in the workplace. From finding professional mentors to achieving a work-life balance, overcoming the obstacles to female leadership, it can be daunting, especially in technical and chief executive roles in the male-dominated business of aerospace and engineering. And here, the representation of women is far lower than in other work centers. However, turning to Carol, these facts alone make you, Carol, a truly unique person. As CEO of Craig Technologies, an engineering technology and manufacturing business you founded in 1999, You've also been on the board of at least 27 different community or charitable institutions. And if that's not enough, you're a devoted wife and mom. And I can't help but ask you, how do you get time for it all? And, and, and I was just wondering, when you go into a typical meeting, Carol, what do you see? A room full of men. <laughs> yeah. And, and actually, I think in the past, I always thought, oh, it's a room full of old white guys. And then I realized, oh, wait. I'm the same age now, so I can't use that word old anymore because I'm up there now, but yeah. <laughs> not, not at all, Carol. But moving on from that, and that's a great response, but seriously though, I should say, how did you build such a successful aerospace and engineering company in an industry that's largely dominated by men? Well, actually probably by ignoring the fact that I wasn't a man, you know, by, by just kind of knowing that I had a mission, I had goals, I had things I wanted to accomplish. I didn't walk around with a chip on my shoulder, you know, thinking, oh, I'm a, I'm a female in a, in a male environment. Um, also, throughout my life, I've been in predominantly male only kind of environments, you know, I was a computer science geek in high school. Uh, I went to uh, the University of Illinois, got my degrees in engineering. I was uh, one of the first naval aviator females to who was uh, eligible to fly combat, you know, so you, again, you can see it's uh, kind of male dominated fields. And so it was only natural, I think, that I kind of gravitated toward government contracting. And um, so, it, 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 like I said, it, it wasn't something that I really obsessed about, but I also didn't try to hide the fact that I was a woman. And when I say that, I mean, like, I didn't try to compensate or try to act like men or that kind of thing, you know, I, I, what I did is I thought as a female, at least they're going to remember me in a room full of guys. Right. Yeah. And, and as long as I get a chance to have a seat at that table, then that's what I want. And then I'm going to show them what I can do and how well I can do it. And so, you know, I, I just, I think that was a lot of how I handled being in that largely dominated male, male field in the past. So, and I wouldn't, I wouldn't accept no as an answer. That's another thing. I think you know, no matter what, male or female, how do you succeed in any environment? You just, you just never take no for an answer. Well, I might take that mantra, not taking no for an answer and take it to heart on that and pursue it in my own life, Carol. But <laughs> um, what I was thinking about, the kind of complexity in your business, I, I'm thinking of things like securing highly competitive government contracts and all the forms that one must do and the obligations, meeting, exacting, manufacturing, design and engineering specs, particularly in aerospace and engineering. That's very tough work. And and I'm just thinking, you know, what experiences or maybe assets that you brought to the table from your earlier background, what, what helped you succeed in that business? For instance, and I was thinking about, I know you were a Navy flight officer and congratulations for your service in that, but was that of help to you as well, Carol? Yeah, that's a good question. So I think I'm probably ADHD. So I, I actually like a lot of things going on, right? And so multitasking, oh, by the way, I, I really believe that women multitask a little better than men do. So when you talked about all the dynamics of my world and the environment, those are probably some things that helped a little bit. But from that Navy perspective, I mean, the number one is attention to detail. I mean, that, I was only in the military for three and a half, four years when I injured my knee and could no longer fly. That's why I'm a service disabled veteran. So it wasn't a long career, but it was enough to teach me that attention to detail. And obviously in engineering or in life critical systems, you know, like we, what we deal with, that's super important. 
Um, I think also the leadership aspect, of course, you know, when in military, that's a lot of what it's about, whether you're learning leadership when you're going through aviation officer candidate school, like I did, or if we were, you know, just in the squadrons. Um, I think that obviously gave me a good base. Um, definitely my confidence was higher after, you know, going through flight school and accomplishing what I accomplished. I mean, that does give you that you know, kind of you know, sit up straighter and say, I can do this. Look, you know, I accomplished this. This can't be that hard, right? Yeah. Um, so, I mean, it, it's it's all those kinds of things. And, and then in government contracting, certainly the relationships that I've had over the years because of even the short few years that I was in the military, you know, really sets you up to know and to have something in common to talk to. So if we're doing government contracting or even space, you know, we have common stories. And especially if I start talking Navy, or anything along those lines, you know, that that just, that helps. Every little bit helps. Yeah, that's really interesting. And to know that that Navy flight officer experience you had really stood you to ground, as you said, made you sit up in the chair and be a participant in what was happening. That's really interesting. But there was one area, as you know, we're with Florida Venture Forum, Capital Forum, and the word capital predominates that. Of course, everybody needs money to survive. And typically early stage and growth stage companies, as you know, they all seek capital, they need it. However, in your case, you took a kind of a different road at the earlier stage and did the very opposite of that. In the beginning, as far as I know, and correct me if I'm wrong, Carol, you didn't invite investors to Craig Technologies. So I was wondering therefore, what strategies did you employ to keep your company solvent? And then how did you overcome those financial challenges as you went through the process of building this great company? Yeah, that's a, that's a great question. Um, I basically did it the hard way, right? I, I think all my life, for some reason, I always want to do things the hard way. Um, so I did things like in the very beginning, I, I used credit cards. So I had, at one point, I had eight credit cards all maxed out to the top. Um, then I moved on to things like uh, you know, trying to convince small banks to give me a working capital loan. I did that. Actually, I found a bank. I started my company in Virginia Beach. And I found a bank that would loan me, you know, I don't even know what the, what the amount was, but a working capital loan. I actually had already done consulting a little bit. So I could say, hey, look, I've got revenues. I can, you know, I'm successful, you know, to, enough for you to loan me money. And so I found this bank. I basically tapped out that working capital loan. So it's supposed to be a working capital, which meant like, you know, more of a accordion type of a thing, like well, tapped it out. And then I'm like, hey, you know, can you turn this into a term loan? And then can you give me another working capital loan? And they're like, okay, I did that. I tapped that loan out. And then finally, the third time I went to ask them, they were like, nope, get out. We're done with you. <laughs> so then I'm like, okay, now what do I do? So I've always been kind of creative with the financing. So then I looked at SBA loans and I've done that a few times. So I've done that with a $150,000 SBA loan and I've done that with a $2 million SBA loan. You know, different sizes within your company, you can do it. The, the challenge with SBA loans is that you pretty much, you know, mortgage your firstborn with, you know, long, you know you've got to do your home, a second mortgage yeah. on your home. You got to have life insurance. You got to have all the collateral, all these things. And, and it's right. not a bad program, but it is a, you know, it's, it's a lot that you're putting on the line. And any of these things, I think the big challenge for entrepreneurs, you're not doing investment, is that it's a personal guarantee. So it is your, your livelihood, your house, your, you know, whatever nest egg you might have. Um, and that's what I, I used my husband's nest egg. When I met him, he was actually very fiscally responsible. I was not. I was a paycheck to paycheck kind of person. He was the kind of guy that when he was single, he invested in Microsoft back in 1985. I mean, you know, Smart I'm the guy. kind of person that was going to the ATM going, I wonder if I can get $10 out of this still. So, so, you know, once I got married, I tried to learn from him and I used his nest egg, you know, as collateral for some of these loans. Um, and then I, as I, as we grew and got a little bit bigger, I looked toward traditional banking support. So for like a, a line of credit, you know, your asset-based lending, I did factoring in the beginning and factoring is the really expensive, you know, lending against your receivables. You're essentially selling your receivables to a company at a reduced rate. Um, then I moved to asset-based lending, which is another banking option. And then, then I went to traditional banking, which is a good place to be. But I tend to run off banks. And uh, as I was investing in my next venture, you know, they're not liking the way this is going. And they're like, yeah, very politely or not so politely. They suggested I find a new banking partner, which I did. 
Um, so I've kind of done it that way. You know, I, I've looked at, I, even for, a, there was a short period where I really did consider investment. Uh, and, and I looked at mezzanine financing and that's a little more expensive loan kind of thing, private right. a little bit, right? And then investors and I've kind of, you know, gone back and forth, but um, right now I'm, I'm actually kind of over using, I'm, I'm over it. I'm tired of using my own money. <laughs> I'm like, it's time, it's time to move on. And especially the things that we're doing, we've moved into now away from the traditional government contracting, and now we're launching our own satellite constellation. So it's a whole different ball game, right. um, you know, better multiples, more exciting kind of stuff. And again, I don't want to do it alone. So now I'm actually looking for investors. Right. So it sounds like you took it to the limit and then recognized that maybe going up to Bob Cabana on a Tuesday afternoon with your credit card wasn't quite the way to be doing it. I can imagine that would be so fun. I mean, do they have credit cards? I guess they do. Yeah. Somebody yeah, they does, do. But... I think they do. Yeah. Well, <laughs> but... you know, one thing I did do, I didn't mention that. So as I was looking at investors, I came across a program that was called revenue based financing. And I don't right. know if people are familiar with that, but it's pretty it's kind of controversial. Um, I, it's been, I did that. And it's been the greatest thing for me. And what it is, is that, you know, people loan you money or, a, and, and it's not a bank, so they right. can do pretty high interest rates and they're very high, mm -hmm. um, but there's no personal guarantee. They're usually second behind the bank right. and, it, you know, and you don't give away any equity. And I ended up doing that. And, and it looks a little painful on paper. You know, you, you borrow X and you pay back two times X, you know, after five years. But, yeah. but you know what, if we go look at our mortgage statements and if we took our mortgage out the entire 30 years, mm -hmm. you have a heart attack realizing what you just paid for your house, right? So sometimes we do better from the heart uh, situation by not knowing, is that what you're saying? <laughs> That's exactly what I'm saying. But Don't give me the out. bad news. Yeah, so, but the revenue financing, revenue-based financing worked out because it's revenue-based, which means right. it's a certain percentage of what you make. So now if you go up and down, but, and that's works good, but now I'm on to the, you know, where I'm really truly trying to find um, equity partners and strategically find people that can help me get to the next level. Right. And, and to be honest, Carol, that's, that's a great response. And it's very, I'm sure it's very educational for those who are listening here now, but to realize that for the young, young companies, this is a way forward. There are several ways of making it work. You're juggling your ways to different stages and then recognizing I need to change my tactic. And it kind of leads in, it's a great segue for our next question, Carol. Um, so as a continuance of that, uh, and as we're participating in this capital conference, have you since changed your mind about potential investors in Craig Technologies? That was something I was feeling you were edging towards. And, and if so, how would you like to see Craig Technologies develop for the future? Yeah, yeah, no, I, I've definitely changed my mind. Well, and I wouldn't say I've changed my mind. I just know that now the timing is right for it because I've been thinking about it for the last five years, but it never quite really happened. But based on everything that's happening with space in particular, um, it, you know, I, I, I feel like our company is, is right there at the forefront of what's happening in space. I mean, there's just so much opportunity and still just a few companies that are doing this. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, it's kind of that sense of urgency. Time is of the essence. I don't want to take another 20 years, you know, and, and not sleep at night and, you know, more gray hairs and all that kind of thing. So I, I want to find that partner and I really want to jump to the next level. And there's so many options out there now too. I mean, I've looked at VC and there's PC and I know that you guys, that's why you're having this, you talk about that, but there's things like SPACs. I mean, I, I'm, that's the um, special purpose acquisition company, you know, right. it's that easier route to IPO. And I'm seeing a lot of companies do that. So I'm not saying we're gonna go that route, but I just see that there's a lot of options. And yeah. um, like I said, I'm, I'm tired of doing it on my own. <laughs> I'm tired of um, sleepless nights. Maybe. Exactly. I'm tired of having, you know, all my, any bit of nest egg, which isn't that much because I keep putting a whole bunch of money back into the company. I'm tired of worrying about, you know, what if, what if, and, um, but again, it's for, you know, everybody's going to be different. You, you know, you've got to kind of, you know, what's your level of risk and certainly with investors, you're giving up a piece of the company, but they may get you from A to B a lot faster. And, you know, at the end yeah. of the day, your ROI, your personal ROI is better. Right. Um, you know, age is a factor, you know, I'm not getting any younger. So at this point, I'm like, okay, I don't have another 20 years. 
Um, <laughs> I'm not going near the age, uh, remark, Cheryl. <laughs> uh, I'm 23 now, so we'll, we'll, we'll take it from there. <laughs> so, um, you know, this is great stories and, it, and it's just shown the realistic, not the glossed over version of how difficult it is to struggle through and preserve your company and take care of it uh, and nurture it and seek the best advantage, both for you, of course, your board of directors and your staff, I'm sure, who you care. You know, one of the interesting things of my job in Space Florida is that whenever the name maybe Craig Technologies comes up in a conversation, the name, you represent the company. You are the figurehead, as you know, of course. But it also, um, it, you've got a tremendous reputation for efficiency and for work and hard working and enthusiasm that is beyond question. And, you know, I congratulate you personally on that, but it gives me a little warm because I'm lucky enough to know you, uh, to see your success, uh, where everybody is kind of saying, go Carol. Truly, we are. Thank you. Yeah. I appreciate that because they're my day. I have the days when I'm like, why am I doing this? You know, it's just like, and I don't know if everyone's like this. Maybe it's just me, but even a little bit of encouragement, you know, from friends like you, Tony, from other, you know, the community is enough to make me just sit up and go, okay, yeah, I can do this. We can do it. Yeah, we can do this. We're going to do it. You know, I could like, I get all hyper again and excited and then I may have a crash at some point, but that's, that's part of being an entrepreneur, right? I mean, you have your ups and downs. And, and so, like I said, I, I very much appreciate you saying that. Well, as we got kind of personal there, and that's okay, Carol, you know, we can do this. We're, there's only five million <laughs> people watching this interview. Um, so I was hoping you might have a personal tale to tell us about, you know, during your years in business, perhaps something like how you overcame an enormous obstacle, something that kept you awake at night, that had you and your husband stress, and maybe even your family, or maybe you were looking for that order, for that valuable sales contract, and you're hoping, I hope maybe tomorrow, maybe tomorrow, and then maybe even rescue your company from disaster. I mean, those things are all within the parameters of operating a business as you do as the CEO. Uh, are there any tales that you think you could share? Uh, yeah, apart from the credit cards with NASA. <laughs> exactly. No, there's uh, there's lots of tales. I mean, every single one of those has happened. And it's happened for the last 20 years. You know, it's kind of like things are going good and then then down and then up. And um, but they're probably the most significant and, and the closest I came to just going, I, I, I can't do this anymore. Happened about four and a half, five years ago. Mm -hmm. I had taken over the NASA shuttle logistics depot. It was through a space act agreement with NASA. We took over all their equipment and this was a completely entrepreneurial effort. So there was no contract that came along with it. Here's all this equipment. You got it for five years, do what you want. We had to lease the building. I ended up bringing on about 30 people from United Space Alliance. You know, so all of this, all bringing on. Mm -hmm. and, and on by then, though, the company was about there might have been about 300 employees. So it wasn't it wasn't super small. So that's good. Um, and so I started to try to grow its manufacturing capability. And unfortunately, as I was growing the business, the business wasn't growing with me. Meaning, I didn't really have enough business space business to sustain that building and everything else and it was very very stressful and and what I was essentially doing was you know I had a profitable side of the business and I'm growing manufacturing so I was taking all of my profits from the one side putting it into the other to grow and eventually you know you might run out of money um, I didn't quite get there but I feel like I did I feel like I was augering in and I kind of you know I'm either going to crash and burn, or I got to do something. And, uh, and I kind of took a step back and, and looked at what we had grown, which was great. And we had yeah. a good reputation. We'd done some amazing things, but it was time to, to resize and to kind of step back and, and bring things into a little bit more manageable um, kind of endeavor, I guess. And, and at the same time, we actually had worked with Space Florida and the ISSNL, and we had a program that we were working on to put an external platform up on the International Space Station. And so these two things kind of happened at the same time. Downsize, have this opportunity to get involved at the ISS, and, and it turned out to be a, a good move. Um, it was very stressful. Like I said, it was, I didn't sleep. I honestly, all full disclosure, I think I lost 20 pounds. You know, I was not, it was, and, and so when something like that happens, you know, your whole family's involved. So even my family was seeing this going on. I had- They're living with you. 
Yeah. 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 Absolutely. And we had, you know, three, 400 employees that I'm still concerned about. And, and so it turned out fine. Even as we downsized, you know, we were able to place a lot of the employees from the manufacturing on our contract at Kennedy Space Center. You know, it, it, it was all good. It took a little while to kind of come out of that. But at the same time, we continued with the flight test platform. We went after some additional facilities that are up on the ISS, you know, kept the eye, our eye on the ball of grow our commercial space. And, and then also kind of like I said, right sizing. And just in the last year, we've seen all of that, you know, kind of sort of come to fruition because now this is why we're able, we're building our own satellites. We're launching a constellation. You know, none of that would have happened if I hadn't have taken that risk with the NASA shuttle logistics depot. None of it would happen if I hadn't downsized when I did, which I still feel like I might've waited a little too long. Um, and none of that would have happened if I had to just kind of, like I said, never, never accept no as an answer and, and keep focused and keep growing. But it was pretty stressful. That's a that's an amazing story, Carol, and it shows your powerhouse, your, your I mean your mindset, determined to succeed. That that's it's a phenomenal story, and it must have been very. I can't even imagine how worrisome it must be on a daily, if not on a minute by minute basis. Your focus <laughs> on achieving things. I'm sure you would agree that the additional, I mean, with the growth of the SpaceX launches that are happening now, and people able to get this cargo up to the ISS and the external platforms. Has, has this spurred you on as well as you've seen in the past year, 18 months? Very much so. I mean, when you see all the momentum and it, yeah, it, it's, I was just talking about this earlier, I think with somebody that um, space, I believe is becoming, and not to go political, but bipartisan, like everybody is excited about what's happening and we're a part of it. And we have an opportunity to do some really, really cool things for our community, for the employees, you know, that kind of that legacy. And it's, yeah, it's exciting. And it does, it does spur me on. I mean, it's kind of, um, we've done, like I so said, we've done things a little different. So you've got a lot of startup companies out there that don't kind of have the history that we have. Sometimes that history makes things more complicated. You know, it's right. not simple. It's complex because of all the things we've done and the and and uh, that sometimes gets a little frustrating because when I'm trying to tell my story, it's not the traditional story for investors and things like that. So they, they kind of go, uh, I don't want to deal with that. So that gets a little frustrating. But then I come back to, we have something really really cool, really awesome. We have an opportunity. Yeah, let's let's keep doing this. So yeah. kind of it's funny. I, I have a great association with the Florida Venture Forum, and I'm very fortunate to attend their board meetings from time to time. And one of the remarks that the solid investors say from from time to time is they love the honesty. They they are not impressed by somebody saying, "Oh, everything is fantastic." You know, I did this, I did that, I did the other. No problems. They know life is different. You know, and the realizing and listening to you i think everybody is going to be super impressed by what you're saying you fought a good fight and you're winning that good fight and i congratulate you it's it's phenomenal achievement carol Thanks. but um i had one area i just thought i might add in as well you know you've been a board member you've been a volunteer for junior achievement on the space coast an educational nonprofit company that teaches children about the importance of financial literacy so Use those credit cards, right, Charles? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and you've also been honored for your business savvy and philanthropy, and I congratulate you on that as well. Mm -hmm. For instance, I personally know in 2016, you led a very successful fundraising campaign for United Way of Brevard. I'm sure several million dollars was collected throughout the county. And you know the importance of mentorship, not only because of that military training as a naval flight officer, but because also because of your experience as a military instructor. And this is kind of a strange question. I was searching on the internet to find something that might just get into you. And you might say, oh, Tony, don't ask me that question. <laughs> but I was wondering, could you share with us? And this might be a final question unless you have further comments. What was the first experience in your life, Carol, when you re realized that you actually had the power to do something truly meaningful in your life? Yeah. Oh, Tony, why would you I, ask that? Um, I apologize. Because, <laughs> gosh, gosh, I don't know. Um, so, so actually, I, okay, I think when I really first started having employees, so, and that was here, in a, one of my first contracts here locally was the, was a contract at KSC, it was called the Clicks contract, and I had a number of employees that I actually became very good friends with, and I think that was when I started to see 
the impact I can have on their lives. And I'm a people pleaser. I always have been, you know, and, and I, I like to see people happy and I like to, you know, that, that kind of thing is important to me. And, and I saw that I can take care of these employees and, and help them so they can actually accomplish the mission. And so I think, I think that was probably the first time where I realized, oh, I can have an impact on somebody's life. And then I think over the last 15 years, you know, it kind of evolved to, yes, the employees, you know, we can, we can get them um, involved in projects that are super cool. You know, we can we give them the best health benefits, that kind of stuff. But, but helping with the community was probably something as well. When I had the, the luxury, I would say, of being able to donate, you know, and to be able to support a number of programs, because you don't always have that as a small business. I mean, I get it, you know, but when you can be like, no, and when we were able to do this, it was right when the shuttle program kind of went away. And so yeah, it's a devastating time. time, right, for Brevard. And you still have all these nonprofits that need support. And we were able to really kind of step up at that time. You know, and I think that happens a lot in nonprofits and in organizations or communities is that, you know, there's this group that'll step up for here at one point. Then they step back and a new group comes in, you know, whether it's age or company related. And, and so I think... Um, I think that was that was really exciting for me to know that you know our hard work and the things that we're doing could actually pay back our community, um, and and then probably I would say the last you know when you talk about impact I still feel like that, you know I don't know am I am I really making an impact I don't know how much I am but um, with what we're doing now and I go back to this you know the constellation because I'm just so excited about it um, it's a it's a global impact right it it extends right. even past employees and community and it's okay we are doing something that's going to have legacy you know and and really and global impact because satellites right sensor data all that i mean it's climate control we can we can support just about anything and and we will and that's where i think that impact at, at the end of the day or the end of the next five ten years i hope that i'll step back and go yeah yeah i did make an impact and now i can really see it well, Carol, I don't need to remind you, you have already made an impact in society, not just in Bavard, but throughout the space industry. And that is evidence from what people say and think of you and the respect we all have for you. I have to congratulate you on that. And, and thank you again, Carol, for taking this interview. And I, I must apologize for being a little personal at times, but I know you well, but I thought <laughs> you would like to open up. Yeah. Now, I yeah, you know, again, you do know me well, and I, I'm kind of you know, um, what you see is what you get a little bit. And, uh, yeah. you know, you were talking about investors might appreciate people who are more honest. I'm probably yeah. too honest sometimes, but yeah, I wouldn't have done this if I thought I had to be, you know, proper and we couldn't have the, the personal conversation. And I appreciate it, Tony. It's great. It's always great to see you. And I can't wait till we can see each other like in person you know, and, uh, and that'll be cool. And I know our president, Frank DiBello, sends his best wishes to you and said he was jealous of me getting the opportunity to speak with you today. So I thank you, Ms. Carol Craig, CEO of Craig Technologies. Thank you so much for this great experience today. Thank you, Tony.